So in this section, we're going to be looking at doing an actual conform to uh, an, an XML. Um, in the previous videos, we had a good overview of how we'd start using some of the tools to manually build a timeline. But of course, uh, most of the time, you're going to be reconforming um, existing media uh, to um, an XML or an AF or an EDL that's given to you by another system like an Avid or Premiere or Final Cut. So we're going to be using the conforming tab to step through this process manually and uh, see how we can actually utilize some of the desktop tools to be able to do a confidence check against an offline. Uh, we're going to be looking at all the media is going to be contained inside the my conform folder here. Uh, I've actually made like a little offline uh, reference and I'm going to be bringing that into a reel on my desktop. And then underneath that we have our XML and in a folder beneath that our media files we have all the media that is going to make up my conform. Uh, now this is all some really nice stock footage off of a site called mazwai.com. Uh, this particular piece was done by a guy called Christian Wesel. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Apologies if I haven't. Um, go and check it out. It's really nice. There's lots of examples in there um, that you could probably use uh, if you haven't got any footage of, you, of your own. Um, really nice site, really good footage. Check it out. This particular piece is like a very high-end realities or estate agent showreel to, to sell a particular house. So back on the timeline, you can see that I've got my offline clip. And uh, if we alt-click on this quickly, you can see the resolution and the... Uh, the frame rate. Uh, we're going to make this a little bit more obvious uh, when we actually use this for part of the conform. So I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to apply a color correct to this. I'm going to my color corrector module, add a really strong blue tint to it. And there's no way that we're going to miss that as being our offline reference. Now the next thing we want to do is basically go through and get our conform in and start to drop this in and start to match some of that media. So if we go into our conform tab for a second, I'm just going to select these for a moment, just remove them. Um, the dialog box actually is, is, tells you what you need to do. You need to right click to load one of these formats. So if we do that, we're going to select the top option. Now the bottom one is for editing and creating new EDLs. We actually want to load one that's already been supplied to us. And that's going to take us back to our Media Hub browser. So we're going to select our XML. Now when you do this, uh, chances are that these three buttons are going to be enabled, uh, which goes to, back to what I was saying about doing this like fully automatic conform. Um, it will just grab the XML or the AF or the EDL. It'll try and find the footage and it will just dump the whole lot on your desktop. And hopefully it will be all there. Uh, but if there's anything wrong or it can't find the media, you're going to have to go back and fix those mistakes afterwards. I normally sort of disable these. So we actually use the tools in the conform module. And you can see a little bit better then um, the process in which it goes through and also be able to sort of troubleshoot problematic clips. So when we import that, we basically get the bare bones structure of the conform without any media. Uh, but what's nice about this is that by doing this process, we go back to our timeline, you can see that that clip, that new timeline is actually living in our sequences reel. So this goes back to what I said before about get used to using the sequence reel as being the place for your edits, because when you start doing conforms, this is going to be the default place that those conforms go into. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, what we call a new version track, not a new layer, but a new version track to drop my offline reference into. Now, version tracks are slightly different from um, actual layers in as much as they are, well, they are separate versions. They're actually invisible to the primary version. So if we look at our sequence here and we scrub through, you can see, well, it's actually uh, pretty invisible because my primary track remember about our crosshairs and our primary track our primary track is basically still has no media in but I can change the status of the secondary track temporarily just to have a look at what's in there now I want to adjust some of the resizing here so um, letterbox is not going to work crop edges is going to get rid of all the blanking so it better fits the aspect of this and I'm kind of happy with that now that when I start to use this as a match, that this is going to be kind of like the right size. I'm going to change my uh, primary track back to the layer I want to conform into. And then we're going to go back into the conform module. So from here, it's pretty much a case of going and finding that media. So if we go to our search location uh, down here, uh, we're going to select that folder that contains all of my media files. And we're going to hit set. And now what it's going to do is it's going to look within that folder for all of that media to match up. Now, what we're going to see here is that uh, we actually have no media linked at the moment. And depending on how you've got your match criteria set, 
uh, depends on how uh, the result of what this is going to look like. You may have all green ticks, you may have all red triangles. In this particular case, I've got a whole bunch of amber warnings. And all that really means is that I haven't actually got any match criteria set to match the media to the conform or vice versa. So if you open up this box quickly, you can see that we've got uh, lots of criteria that we can use. Uh, and depending on where your media comes from, how it's been named, what the time code is, tape names, etc., you'll be using some generally not all of these to get successful matches if we went to do a match based on the name uh, we're not having a lot of success on that now you're also going to get a highlight that depending on the criteria that you select it's going to say well this one it seems to match anyway but I haven't actually got a hundred percent match on this now now you can set how strict this looks for or you can set how loosely it looks for so at the moment the strict option is off if we tap strict it's going to look for a hundred percent verbose match for all the characters in there now sometimes uh, that may also not work and you may actually just want to match on like the first three characters or first two characters of a particular name and then you can set that option as well in this particular case we want to go strict we're going to have a hundred percent match and that's what's going to line everything up uh, the other thing as well is that you know if you're using repeating clips sometimes you want to make sure that you get the right part so you want to do multiple matches or criteria so in this particular case we're going to do source time code as well you only get a strict option for that it has to be 100% match for it to be to actually work as source time code and here you can see that you've got that column highlighted as well now once we've got some media that we think is matching uh, what we'd really like to do before we drop all this media into our timeline is to then sort of match it up against our confidence check our offline that we put into that secondary track now to access that if we go over here to our options we can bring up an edit compare modes dialog box now what this does is it allows me to introduce a split uh, between our tracks so here I've got my this is the v11 uh, one track where all my video is going to be going into all my media i want to compare it against the that secondary offline track and if we go down here we can then decide on how that is actually going to be displayed so if we just drag uh, this across a little bit we're just going to actually hide our workspace panel for a bit and just give us a bit more room uh, you can see now that as i kind of scrub through this that I have a definitive sort of split between those two regions. And there's a couple of different ways we can look at this. We can do side by side. Uh, we could do like a difference mat, which is kind of good. Vertical, horizontal. But we're going to stick to an angle split. What's really handy is that most of the editorial tools that are available on the desktop are also available uh, inside the conform module as well. So um, as we're going through, I've actually put in some deliberate mistakes here. If we kind of zoom in on this, you can see that there's a, a discrepancy in the timing between um, the media I'm bringing in, the conform, and my offline. And I've done that deliberately so we can play with some of the tools. So if we look at this for a second and we grab our slip tool, uh, we, on this particular segment, even though we're kind of not modifying the media, we're modifying the conform before it goes in, uh, we can actually come down here and we can resync that to be correct to the offline. So we're kind of fixing things. I've done another one a little bit further down where we've got uh, a kind of like an offset between our cuts. You can see here if we just go through my offline cuts there and my conform actually cuts a couple of frames later. So once again, if we just pick uh, something like slide cuts, we're zooming, we're going to grab uh, this cut. We can actually snap that cut to be in the right place now so everything's in sync so lots of nice little tools that allow you just to go through and make sure that you've got your conform working all nicely before you actually come to the point of dropping that media in so we're kind of happy with everything that's going on there now we could go through we could just um, take this back to our primary version and you can see that we haven't actually physically dropped any media in at the moment um, to do that we're just going to go link sources and you can see now that all of my media gets dropped into my segments on my timeline. There's a nice function here that filters out all the linked clips. Um, if you turn it off, you can see that this is all the media that's linked in with the little chain link. Uh, but once again, like I said, if you haven't got all the media available uh, or you've got problematic events, sometimes it's nice to filter out the stuff that's uh, not there or you've got to work on against the stuff that you know you successfully matched in. Coming back to my timeline now. 
Let's bring our workspace uh, panel back up and you can see that a couple of things have happened. Uh, it's automatically saved all of my sources onto my desktop as well uh, as an extra uh, bonus, I guess you could call it. Now, these are all the original length sources uh, from the edit that makes up that sequence. These are handy in case you want to reconform at a later date. You get a different edit. You can actually point the conform module to look at this sources reel as well. Uh, but nine times out of ten, it's going to be just a little bit of clutter on the desktop. Now you could of course move it to a new library, uh, but one of the nice things about the the desktop is that you can filter things through. So as well as you know going through and creating new reels and grabbing reels and throwing reels away, is that you can also decide to just hide reels on the desktop. So you may have lots of media. You may have have lots of reels on there uh, but it's a nice way of filtering down and get rid of some of the visual chaff that you don't need to see all the time so this has got us through a, a nice uh, kind of conform we see how we can use offline as a reference we can see how we can go and search and match up our media uh, of course you're going to get more complicated ones but like i said this is a this is a good sort of intro on how to start doing your conforms and sort of looking for some ways to troubleshoot and also compare and fix things so that rounds us off really for about the editorial, the introduction. Uh, the next video, we're going to start looking at uh, batch effects, a different kind of effects on the timeline that we briefly saw when we were looking at timeline effects. So it's been good. I hope to see you then.